Amen. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter number one. Second Timothy chapter number one. Verse number seven says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amplified says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving or cringing and fawning fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Amen. We're talking from the subject matter of overcoming the spirit of fear. Amen. Whenever there is fear that the believer has, there is an absence of faith. Amen. And I believe fear is one of the greatest hindrance to the believer operating in what pleases God. And that's faith. Amen. Because the Bible says without faith, we can't please him. So fear is the magnetic force that draws the enemy's results to you versus faith, which draws God's blessings toward you. Amen. And you cannot be in faith and fear at the same time. It's like oil and water. They just don't mix. Amen. Either you're going to be in one or the other. Amen. And I'm finding that many believers are operate in fear. When it comes down to the situations that they face in their lives, instead of believing God, they have doubt, unbelief, they're afraid, they're paralyzed because of fear. Amen. Now go to John chapter 16. Amen. Now, the Christian life would never be a life that's free from having to deal with challenges or the demands of life. But you just cannot get into fear when you're dealing with those things. When people tell you that once you get saved that it's going to be a bed of roses, they're lying to you. Amen. The attack, the onslaught of the adversary, the devil, has just begun. Now, you cannot get into a place of fear and and operate your faith. John chapter 16. Look at verse number 33. John 16. Verse number. 33. We're going to face some challenges. Some trials, some tests, some tribulations that the Bible declares. John 16. Verse number 33. Look what it says. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have what? <clears throat> you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The Amplified says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you will have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, and undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of the power to harm you and have conquered it just for you. Amen. So he says you're going to have some challenges. Amen. But I'm trying to get you to a place where you just don't get into a place of fear because fear will paralyze you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, even when we have to walk through the valley, we don't have to be in fear. Amen. Go to Psalms 23. Amen. Psalms 23. Hallelujah. Psalms 23. Verse number one. Psalms 23. Verse number one. Look what he says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, 
though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. Amen. Now, tonight I want to I want to deal with uh, a few things of what are some of the things that people fear. Amen. Now, I want to submit to you tonight that one thing that people fear is failure. <laughs> Amen. The devil tried to paralyze believers who God is telling them to step out of the boat. Paralyze them because he says that you might fail. And that's why many believers don't take the step of faith when it's, when it's something that's outside of their comfort zone. See, we can do whatever you know, we're, we're trained to do what we're familiar with doing, but it's only when it's something that I have not ever achieved, something that I, I don't even know about, that fear will try to paralyze me from doing. So, but isn't the Bible clear that it says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me? So no matter what it is or how much knowledge I have, I do not have to fear failure, amen? Because I can do all things. You can do all things. If it's a business God wants you to start, you can do it. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you can do all things. Amen. So the fear of failure usually paralyzes people. Amen. Not only that, watch this now. Go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Secondly, I want to submit to you tonight that people get into a spirit of fear when it comes to a God assignment. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, when God gives you an assignment and you feel that you're not qualified, that you're not prepared for it, the devil can't shoot a spirit of fear at you not to do it. Amen. Listen, many people who have been called to preach, but because they're so paralyzed by fear, they choose not to do it because they don't want to fail. And it's an awesome responsibility that ministers of the gospel have. Amen. So the devil shoots that thought at you and say, Judah, look, you better not preach. Those people know how you used to be. Praise the Lord. And, and look, look, when, when, when I first got called to preach, Sister Gwen went to praying. Because my, my, my fear was I didn't know the Bible. You know, we went to, to, the, to the summer, you know, the summer little VBS and, you know, vacation Bible school. And they tried to teach you the, the scripture, but I wasn't paying attention. I was sleeping. So, so when, when we got, first got in church as a married couple, I used to have to pass her my Bible and she used to find the scripture and give it back to me so I could read it. And so here I am being called to preach the gospel. Don't know Genesis from Revelation. Now, you know, fear just tried to grip my heart. Amen. Because how, how are you going to preach to God's people? Amen. <laughs> and teach them the word of God because God told me to teach. And that's why I tried hooping because hooping, you don't need to study. No, you can just get on, on the pulpit and open the Bible wherever it falls. Praise the Lord. This is what we're going to talk about? Because I ain't talking about that. I'm going to hoop to you. And so, 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 so I didn't have to study. But <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. But I was in fear. The spirit of fear almost gripped my heart. But then I prayed. I said, God, give me knowledge so that I can lead your people. Teach me your word so I can teach your people. Amen. You in Jeremiah chapter 1? Jeremiah, chapter number one, look at verse number four. Jeremiah, chapter one, verse number four. Watch this. Jeremiah, chapter one, verse number four. Hallelujah. Look what it says. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. 
Be not afraid of their faces. Wow. Because see, when you preaching and you're looking at the faces of the people that you're preaching to, the spirit of fear can't grip you. Now, now, that's some other folk. I ain't scared of y'all. Praise the Lord. I done told y'all before, I ain't, scared, I ain't scared. I ain't scared at all. But he tells Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of their gestures and their looks and all that kind of stuff. Why? For I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Amen, amen, amen. So, so, so when there is an assignment that God gives you, one of the things that the enemy tries to do is paralyze you and get you into a spirit of fear so that you can reject the calling. Amen. Amen. I don't care if it's preaching. I don't care if it's singing. I don't care whatever the assignment is. The devil will try to put on you a spirit of fear. Amen. And listen, listen to me now. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God ain't going to change his mind. Amen. The call that he has for you, you still have to do it. Amen. See, God says, listen, Jeremiah, you don't have to get in fear. Don't worry about their faces. Don't worry about their looks. Look, I'm with you. Amen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perform my word. That, you, that whatever word you speak that I tell you to speak, I'm going to perform that word for you. Who praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, go to Matthew chapter 6. Another fear that people have whether they want to admit it or not, is a fear of not having enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6. Yeah, people have a fear that, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to eat. I don't know what I'm going to wear. I don't know where I'm going to live. I just don't know, I, I don't know anything about that. And, and fear will grip your heart if you let it. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse number 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 25. Especially those, uh, you know, we have single parents, and sometimes it seems difficult uh, to be able to provide the things for your family that you need. Well, see, you have to look at the source. Who's your source? Amen. See, it's your source that, that matters. If you are your source, then you might be in trouble. <laughs> but, but if God's your source, God said he's going to take care of that for you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. Are they not? Uh, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are yet are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, are getting into a place of fear, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow; they toil not. Neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, uh, of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. 
So God said, listen, don't get into a place of fear when you don't know when, where things are coming from. What you going to eat, what you going to wear, what you going to drink. God said, I got you covered. Amen. And when your source tells you that you, he got you covered, there's no need to fear. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said he already know you got needed this stuff. Hallelujah. And so you can't let the devil paralyze you when it comes down to what you, what's your daily. He said, look, ask for your daily bread. Amen. Your daily bread. See, the devil will get you into all kind of fear. Amen. You will be panicked. Praise the Lord. A panic attack will come on you. I don't know what we're going to eat. God's your source. The children of Israel were out in the wilderness. Amen. And God fed them with manna on high. Had the quails dropping stuff off to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you don't need to get into a, a, a panic, a fear attack. Because you don't know where it's coming from. Now, now watch this, watch this. Ooh, watch this. You don't have to fear your enemies. Amen. Go to 1 Samuel chapter number 17. Even when it looks like they are giants, you don't have to fear your enemies. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter how many are against you. If God be for you, who, who, who can be against you? They can have 10,000. Amen. And it could be just you and your family. You got more with you than you have that they have with them. Amen. There's no need to fear your enemy. As a matter of fact, your enemy needs to fear you. Because God's on your side. <laughs> Amen. First Samuel chapter 17. Look at verse number four, first Samuel chapter 17, verse number four. Look what it says. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits a span. So, so look up. So this man was almost 10 feet tall. Amen. Goliath. This big old boy came up against the children of Israel and they were in fear because they didn't know how they were going to defeat this man. Jump down to verse number 11. So David arrives on the scene to bring his brother some food. Let me just tell you what the other verses talk about. David shows up bringing his brother some food and he hears Goliath talking trash. Amen. And so David said, oh, who is this uncircumcised Philistine talking about my God? And his brother said, boy, be quiet. Amen. So David said, look, look, if nobody else will fight him, I'll go fight him. What's the reward for fighting this man? So then verse 11. When Saul, the king, and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were greatly afraid. Goliath was talking noise. And they were greatly afraid. Go, jump down to verse 33. And Saul said to David, because David said, I'll take care of this guy for you. Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. And he, a man of war from his youth. So even his brothers and even the king said, listen, we're already afraid of this man. And you're a little scrawny little boy that been minding your father's sheep and you're going to come out here to a, a, a war ground trying to defeat a 10-foot giant. You can't do it. Wow. Isn't that amazing how the people in the, some people in authority try to get their fear on you? Amen. Some of your parents were afraid of dogs and they trained you from an early age to be afraid of dogs. That dog ain't done you nothing, but you in fear. Why? Because the person in authority told you, fear that dog. Amen. Verse 34. And David said unto Saul, 
thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be one as one of them, since he had defied the armies of God. Now check David out. The, the, the reason why David didn't get into a spirit of fear, because he remembered what God did for him before. He remembered how God delivered him. The Bible says God delivered us out of all of our situations. And David said, hold up a second. The reason I, I'm not going to be afraid, because I remember when I was in a challenging situation, a bear and a lion came to take up my father's flock. God delivered me out of their mouth. And he's going to do the same thing for me. Now, now watch this now. How many believers have amnesia when it comes down to what God has done for you in the past? How God delivered you out of this situation and that situation. And now here is an uncircumcised situation coming up in your life. And you have forgotten that it was God that got you out. You've forgotten of the power that God has in his right, in his, just his right hand. But David said, listen, this is how I get out of fear. I remember how God brought me out. Amen. See, see, I mean, y'all need to go back and remember the little shotgun houses that you used to have. I know you're living large now. Praise God for that. But, but guess, look, sometimes you need to remember. Amen. Amen. Because, because, see, you're, you're remembering that it was God that gave you the power to get the stuff. It's what's going to get you over. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 37. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. You know, Saul, Saul the king. He said, look, okay, you go ahead. I ain't coming. May, yeah. You remember we used to sing that song? May the Lord. What was that song we used to sing in the song? May the Lord watch. Between me and thee. Why are we after one from another? <laughs> That's what Saul was telling David. Look, why are we after one from another? May the Lord be with you. Amen. So now watch this, watch this now. Verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed to go. Well, he, not, he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And David put them off him. So David said, listen, listen now. If I go to battle with this stuff, I'm going to get in fear because I ain't proved this stuff. I have proven God. And I know what he can do. He can take a little scrawny boy like me from Beaumont, Texas. <laughs> oh, it's 130 pounds so good with. Amen. And anoint me and use me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Against a giant. David said, listen, listen, guys, I, I, I can't use what you use. I know what got me here. I know what God used, what the tools I can use. See, 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 there's some, see, see, some of y'all, see, <laughs> people want to give you things. But what got you through was your praise and your worship. Amen. And so instead of using what they gave you, you need to go back to what got you where you are. Praise the Lord. They were saying, prove this stuff. So the Bible says he took a staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of a brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in the script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he said, hold up. Y'all gonna send this little boy out here? Y'all gonna, you really gonna send that little boy out there? 
He said, I'm a man of war. Send me somebody that can fight with me. And David said, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'll be the man. I'm, I'm the one that's going to take you down. <laughs> Verse 43 says, and the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog? That thou comest to me with a staff, with some sticks? That's what the staffs are, sticks. He said, you're going to come to me with some sticks? And the Philistine cursed David, oh my goodness, by his God. And the Philistine said unto David, come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then this said David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give, <laughs> boy, take David out. He said, look, hold up a second. You talk about me. Let me, let me tell you something. You got all your little tools, your little war paraphernalia. I'm just coming to you in the name of the Lord, a host, the God of Israel, whom you defied. He said, look, I'm not going to only kill you, but I'm going to take your head off. And I'm going to serve your body to the, to the fowls of the air. Amen. See, 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 when you listen, we li listen to me now. When you know who your God is, and you know that He got you back, He got your back. You can go talk face to face with your enemy and tell him, listen, my God shall deliver me. Woo, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Don't be afraid of your enemies. When you know who your God is and what he can do, you do not have to get into a spirit of fear. The Lord is my light, verse 1 says, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should arise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. He said, listen, I ain't going to be scared of my enemies. Amen. Even when they come up against me, they're going to stumble and fall. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we don't have to get into a place of fear when it comes down to my enemies. Now, go to uh, Proverbs 19. Another thing, another thing that people fear is they fear giving. Somebody say giving. They fear that if I give, I'm going to lack. And that's why you have a lot of people in church that don't give because they fear that if I give this, I won't have enough of myself. And that is why the statistic that says only 20% 20 percent of people in church give 80% of the resources it's so true because the other 80 percent are in fear because if I give it to you or if I give it to somebody else, then I ain't going to have enough for myself. Well, listen to me now. God's system is the only system that's going to work for you. Amen. And God set up a system that if I give, I will not lack. Praise the Lord. Amen. And people, people, the devil will park on your shoulder and he'll say that if you give that, you are going to go without. And so he puts that, that panic attack on you that you're not going to have. Well, you're never going to go without. You're never going to lack if you do it God's way. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 19. Yeah, I've seen it happen, man. I've, I've seen it happen to people. I mean, they, God tells them to give a certain thing away, and they get into a, a, a spirit of fear, and they, they reject God's plan. 
and they miss out on the promised return that God had for them. Hallelujah. Look what it says. He that had pity upon the poor lended unto the Lord and that which he had given will he, God, pay him again. So when God places on my heart to give, when it, even if it's my last, I'm never going to lack. Because as I give it to somebody else, I'm lending it to God. And God said, I'm always going to pay you back. And I'm going to pay you back good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. That's my system, God says. Woo, Jesus. But many people, they, 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 they fear giving. They fear giving. And so, so what they try to do is make it seem as if it's a man's idea. Amen. So, so they'll say, all the preacher wants is my money. When the devil is really, he got you in a place of fear because you don't want to give because you're going to go without. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Look at verse number 27. And one of the easiest ways for, for, for me to really evaluate a person's life is really to check out their giving. Amen. Because their giving will really tell me whether they trust God or not. Ooh, praise the Lord. Look at verse number 27. Proverbs 28, verse 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. So when the devil try to place on you the spirit of fear that you're going to lack, you tell him, no, I'm not going to lack. I'm not going to lack because I've given it like God told me to give it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. All right. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Just a few more. Proverbs chapter 3. Another, another thing the devil try to do and get you into a spirit of fear is to cause you to have nightmares. <laughs> try to mess with you in your sleep. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says he wants us to have some sweet rest. Praise God. I mean, you want your sleep to be so sweet that you are refreshed for the next day. But the enemy, in order to get you into a spirit of fear, he will attack your subconscious mind. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. Proverbs chapter number three. Proverbs chapter three. Look at verse number 24. Proverbs chapter three, verse 24. Watch this. Yeah, you don't have to fear no nightmare. Now, now I, look up, look up for a second. Have you, have you ever, have you ever had a dream and it seemed so real to you that you woke up in a deep sweat? I mean, I mean, you, your heart was beating so fast, somebody was chasing you. They was chasing you, trying to, trying to harm you. And now, now you're in fear now. So now you stay up all night long. I can't go back to sleep. I just can't go back to sleep. Why you can't go back to sleep? Amen? Because that's fear. That's fear. See, see, what I have found is when that situation happens, get your Bible out. Start reading the word of God. Get the word on your situation and watch what happens. You're going to fall right back to sleep. Verse 24 says, when thou lies, lies down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie, lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and he shall keep thy foot from being taken. Amen. So I don't have to fear no nightmare. Amen. Why? Because my confidence is in, is in the Lord. The Lord is my confidence. Now, the last thing I want to submit to you tonight that people have a fear of. And that's death. People fear death, man. See, if you say you really don't have to fear death. I, I like to look at death as a as a trail to get to to get you to your heavenly father. Amen. See, see, you remember you remember uh, how if you had to go. Well, see, I grew up in the hood. I got uh, and see. So we used to cut through people's yard to get a shortcut to where we was going. Because if we had to go all the way around, it was going to take us all day to get where we need to go. So, so, so we had to, you know, we jump somebody's fence. And you, and you could see a little trail going, there. well, somebody been through there, you know. 
So, I mean, and so you just take the little trail. Well, see, death is just another trail to get you to where, where the kingdom is. Amen. Get you to your heavenly father. Praise God. And so you don't have to get into a place of fear. Amen. Watch this now. Go to, uh, go to, uh, go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. There is an inescapable appointment that all of us have. Amen. Inescapable. You're not, you're not going to get past it. All of us got to face this appointment. You know, there's some, there's some doctor's appointments that you could just bypass. You know, I don't feel like going to the doctor. But this appointment, you got to, you don't have to, you got to keep this appointment. Now, I, I suggest to you that if this appointment comes up, you better be saved. Amen. Amen. I, I mean, you, you got to be prepared for this appointment. And the only way you can be pre- prepared for this appointment is, is accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Verse 27. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So, so there is an inescapable appointment that all of us have. Now, now I truly believe, listen to me now, I truly believe that you ought to live a long life. I believe that you should not die before your time. I plan on standing here 122 years. Sister Gwen is 100. She's a couple of years behind me. I'm standing 122. Amen. And I'm going to still be cool at 122. I'm going to still have all my faculties. I'm going to still be, look, I'm going to have to ask Matthew, can, I, can, can daddy preach? <laughs> can I preach today? <laughs> you know, yeah, let daddy preach today. I, I can still do it. I can pull it. I can pull it. Amen. But, but I, I plan on being here a long time. I plan on, listen, I, I, when, whenever, whenever they come, I plan on be, being active in my grandchildren's life. Praise, look, that, I'm be, boy, I'm going to be a great grandparent. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, but I'm not going to die before my time. God promises 120 years. Amen. So, so look, listen to me now. Many believers are shortening their lifespan by one what they eat. Amen. There's some part of the pig you just can't eat. Those pig feet cause your blood pressure to rise up. Hog head cheese, blood pressure up. Crackling, yeah. Amen. There's some, listen, listen, there's some things that you just can't eat. Amen. That if you want, if you want to live a long, productive life. Amen. And so many believers are dying because they are uninformed about their dietary, the process. Amen. The, 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 the stuff that comes out of the earth, that's what God say. Eat that stuff. Praise the Lord. Amen. But anyway, anyway, don't die before your time. Yeah, you got to stop some of the habits that you have. You just can't. You, praise the Lord. I know, I know, I know uh, Paul told Timothy to have a little wine for your medicine, but we got medicine now for that stuff. So you shouldn't be having all the wine coolers and all that kind of stuff, you know. Praise the Lord. Y'all, you know, y'all been watching too much TV, everything on TV. Now they're drinking a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. You no, know, give me the whole bottle now. Don't you know, give, me, give me a whole case of bottles now, you know. So praise the Lord. Now it, it's messing up your liver, your, all that, your kidneys and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Lord Jesus. Move on, Pastor. Move on. <laughs> Come on. Move on. Move on. Go, go, go to, go to. The Bible says that, <laughs> that God, that, see, I got to put them in ISS. I put them in ISS in school suspension. The Bible says that God has come to destroy the works of the enemy. Okay? Right now, watch this. Go to uh, go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. So, God, if God says I have come to destroy something, it must be something from the enemy. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Look at verse number twenty-four. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse number twenty-four. Watch this now. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 24. Look what it says. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down the, all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Is death. Jump down to verse number 54. Watch this. Watch this. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, uh, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where's your sting? O grave, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, since he gave us the victory, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He said, that, look, he's going to take the sting out of death. He's going to give us the victory over death. So we should not be in fear when it comes down to dying in the Lord. Get that now. If you're dying in the Lord, you're okay because you got the victory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Watch this. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Watch this now. Ooh, watch this. Watch this. I don't have to be afraid of dying. Now, I don't want to die before my time. Amen. But there, there should not be any fear when it comes down to death. Now, let me say this while I'm here. If your loved one is saved, if they're saved, your loved one passed away and they saved, you don't have to act a fool at the funeral. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because they, they're in a far better place than us. I mean, we still going to have this trials and tribulations here on this earth. But they're in paradise with the Lord. Amen. So, so, so don't be jumping in the casket. Saying, take me. No, no, no. You tell, I, look, I'm going to tell a funeral director. Next time somebody say, take me, put them in. <laughs> and watch how fast they get out. But, but see, I don't have to act a fool when my loved one is saved. Amen. I know they're in a better place. I know they got the victory. Amen. I know that, look, that we don't have to be afraid of death because I am in him. And if you are a believer, you don't have to fear death. Revelations, chapter number one. Watch this now. Look at verse number 18. Revelations, chapter number one. Look at verse number 18. Look what Jesus says. I am he that liveth and was dead. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 was, I was dead, but I'm living. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. He said, I'm the man. I, took, I went and snatched the keys from the enemy so that my people don't have to fear death anymore. Because I'm alive forevermore. <laughs> Amen. So I don't, have, I don't have to fear. I don't care what it is. I don't have to fear. Amen. I don't have to look. As a matter of fact, you could take authority over the spirit of fear. Because fear comes from the devil. And the Bible says that God has given us authority over every demonic force, over every demonic spirit that comes up against us. And since fear is a spirit from the enemy, I could take authority over it. Amen. And so you need to regulate your lives and overcome the spirit of fear. Amen. Look what he says. I haven't given you that, that spirit. I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Amen. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen.